Good afternoon, my name is Raul Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about substance abuse in senior citizens. It has become a serious problem. Uh, as people get older, uh, families seem to tend to move away, children become older and get their own children, and the grandchildren don't come out and visit as much as the grandparents would probably like it to be. So uh, the uh, older folks that just get lonely and they start uh, possibly abusing alcohol and or drugs and that's the subject for today it is a serious problem for senior citizens drug abuse or uh, substance abuse I should say as usual I'd like to shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez over at Starting Point he is at 844-414-8444 Dr. Luis Gonzalez has two entities to his business the first one is to take you from your addiction to recovery he will walk with you step by step the whole way through. He will never look at your past. Uh, he is not a therapist or a counselor. On the other side of his business, he is a uh, recovery coach. And what that is, is, is that he will um, uh, make or try to help you become a recovery coach. If you possess, uh, possess the passion, personality, and professionalism, and you have some sort of addiction background, whether it being your own or uh, a loved one, uh, helping a loved one through their addiction. Contact him at 844-414-8444 and see if he can help you become an addiction coach. You can find him on the website at www.startingpointmn.com. That's Dr. Louis Gonzalez at startingpointmn.com. From my side of the business, I have two websites, as everybody knows. The first one is for informational purposes. That one is called www.clearviews.info. That's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. Everything on there basically is for all for addiction and recovery information. You have articles, you have uh, newspaper clippings, you have videos. The videos and articles and newspaper clippings are mostly from doctors, psychologists, and psychiatrists. Those are the clinical people that dispense this information. I merely put their information on my website for you to see. You will, however, find 68 of my own videos. My videos are either my own testimony or uh, where I chat about mothers against drunk driving, students against drunk driving, the CDC's information uh, hotlines, the Mayo Clinic's articles. I put all that on video for you to see because I have learned in life it is sometimes easier to understand a situation when it is presented with a face behind it. When you see my face and my voice, you might understand the situation better than if you didn't see that. Um, so uh, that is one certainly one way to do that um, is to go to www.clearviews.info and you can get the information now. On the other side of my business, you have www.clearreform.com. Now, the Clear Reform is like Dr. Lewis Gonzalez. It is a website to help you uh, go from recovery to addiction. I don't do the uh, making someone into an addiction coach because I don't have the experience like Dr. Lewis Gonzalez does, but I can coach. I am now a master addiction recovery coach, so I can help you uh, with your addiction. So what you can do is reach out to me. You can reach me, text me at 631-599-0218, or you can call me at 844-405-HELP. You can also email me at clearreform at yahoo.com. That's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M uh, at yahoo.com. Folks, when I speak about how Dr. Lewis Gonzalez and how I go and help you from, uh, from addiction to recovery, that's an important uh, uh, fact that I want to bring up for myself especially. Because we always speak about the chapters in your book of life. Everyone has chapters that start at their birth. When we're all born, that is our first chapter in our book of life until the last chapter and that is upon our passing it is what is in between that is most important it is more importantly what's towards the end because it will be remembered most by 
friends, family, uh, acquaintances, they will remember mostly everything about you from your later chapters because it is closer to the present situation at time of having to think about it. So this is why I bring this up is because when my book of life started, which was in 1961, um, I kind of had a normal childhood and I'm going to fast forward. Every year is one chapter. I'm going to fast forward to chapter 17, which is when I was 17. So all the chapters before my parents helped me write my book of uh, my chapters in my book of life. When I became 17, I graduated high school, went to college and joined the Marine Corps. Now, 1981, I was in boot camp and a chaplain tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to come into his room. I went into his room and he brought up uh, a uh, request and wanted to know if I can become a lay leader. Now, mind you, right now I'm a addiction recovery coach. It's between addiction and recovery. What a lay leader is, is a person that's between the chaplain and a recruit. He guides the recruit to the chaplain and vice versa. The same as what I'm doing now, which is between, I guide between recovery, excuse me, addiction and recovery. And the reason I bring that up is because this is already, in 1981, God had already set my life in motion to continue doing what I am doing. If you go from 81 to 2014, that's a lot of years. But let's now go back to 1981, where I became a lay leader. As time went on, more chapters kept getting written. So now we are at 1981, so it's already 20 chapters. And I started re, re, uh, writing my own chapters, and every chapter included uh, alcoholism. Just kept going and kept going. So now we're in 2009. I have an accident in Alaska. That accident holds me back in life for about three years of physical therapy and not working. So my drinking became worse and worse. God was looking down at me, and he realized that I still had the the uh, ability to help people, uh, but I have a handicap, and that handicap is called alcoholism. 2011 now, so now we're at the, what is that? That's 50 years, I believe, 2011. Yeah, that's 50 years or 50 chapters. Ta God tapped me on my shoulder, and um, he said, I still see that you have the ability and the desire to help people. Try to do it now. So I created Mastic Beach Outreach 2011. And what that is, is that uh, we were helping handicapped people, mentally challenged people, and also elders with food, supplies, and work. God noticed that I still was able to do a lot of the things that I was able to do in 1981, but that handicap called alcoholism was still with me. So God said, I will let him continue writing his own chapters. 19, uh, 2013 shows up and then finally God realized that I was about to crash literally into the pit of rock bottom. 2013, June 22nd, I reached rock bottom. It is then where I realized that alcohol needs to be away from my life, that I am ready to continue in God's uh, path, what he wanted me to do, back in 1981 but from 81 to 2013 all those years all those chapters were written with one consistent thing in every chapter and that was called alcoholism June 22nd 2013 God extended his long arm pulled me out of the pit of rock bottom and said now you can continue doing what I wanted you to do in 81 but now you can do it with a uh, sober mind, a clear mind, and without any handicap. And that handicap was alcoholism. 2013 is when this all happened, June 22nd. So from 2013 until maybe months later, God somehow brought Dr. Louis Gonzalez from starting point into my life. Now, mind you, I live in New York and he lives in Minnesota, so it's a big distance apart. Dr. Luis Gonzalez noticed I, I was doing videos and he thought the approach of how I battle my own recovery and my own addiction was interesting. So we started speaking and we decided that I would go through his educational program because I, back in 81, was a lay leader. I've always been a type of person to be in between a negative situation and a positive. 
mind you, recruit and chaplain, addiction recovery. So I went through his program and in 2014, I took my final exam, passed it and became a master addiction recovery coach. So the moral of this story is that we all have chapters to be written in our book of life. Mine started in 1961 at birth, continued going, but it wasn't until 2013 when those chapters started being written by me in a positive sense. Not that my life was bad from 61 all the way to 2013, but my handicap called alcoholism kept those chapters tainted with a mark. 2013 from now until my end of time, those chapters will include things such as helping people, caring, loving, a person with a drive and a passion. That is what my chapters will include. My recommendation to you is no matter who you are and what you've done from today beforehand, it is now time for you to take over and re start rewriting your future chapters in your book of life. Do not let your chapters become any worse than they have been. Let me adjust this camera for a second, please. There we go. That's better. So, folks, we need to rewrite our books, our, our chapters in our book. At all times, we need to do that. But why not start today? Because I don't care what you have done in the past as much as God doesn't care what I've done in the past. What matters is today, being uh, September 17th, and the future. It doesn't matter what else. I can see my cat is somewhere around here because my nose itches every time she's around. But that is the bottom line. So with that said, we're going to address this issue a little later again because we're going to talk about being a role model. But the, your chapters in your book of life are the most important uh, documentations that you'll ever find for your own life. There are two books that are very important in your life. That is the Bible and your own book of life. The Bible is already written. The Bible cannot be changed. Your book of life has been written up to today, but your future days can be changed, but only changed by you. So let's talk about the substance abuse in senior citizens. It is a serious problem. And I'm going to read this, and I got this from the Mayo Clinic. Substance abuse isn't just a problem for young, lonely, lon for the young. Loneliness and mental health issues coupled with pre-existing alcohol and drug habits have turned many older adults to control substances in their golden years. Here's what you should know about recognizing substance abuse in your elders and where to turn for help. So these are some of the signs. Substance abuse knows no boundary of age, color, profession, it doesn't, I've said this so many times, substance abuse and addiction will eat you up, whoever you are. You could be the king of any country or you can be a homeless person in Manhattan. Substance abuse doesn't care about who you are. It only cares of what it can take from you. Substance abuse knows no boundary of age, says Dr. Stephen Scheintel, D.O. and uh, uh, osteop osteopathic geriatric psychiatrist from Stafford, New Jersey. Whether you are 20 years old or 80 years old, you may see drinking or taking, you may be dr taking drink. I'm sorry about that beep. Taking uh, drugs or drinking a lot of alcohol, whether legal or illegal, as a way of coping with grief, anxiety, depression, or pain. Alcohol can have significant interactions with prescribed medication. It can, and it probably will. Findings from a National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism show that 20 to 30 percent of people ages 75 to 85 have experienced drinking problems and according to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, 3.6 of adults ages 60 to 64 report using an illicit drug. While the rate of seniors using illegal drugs like marijuana is low, older adults often take higher number of medications to treat chronic illnesses, says Dr. Chantel. 
On an average, seniors take four to nine pills per day between their prescription drugs and over-the-counter medications. And, uh, and abuse of these medications is not all, always easily uh, spotable. So we have to be very careful of what that is. Now, just so you folks, that beep that you just heard, I um, have online chatting uh, for my business and that's what that is. And if you hear it again, I apologize. I just didn't want to get out of the program because it's hard for me to get back into it right away. So I do apologize. Special considerations for seniors. The effects of alcohol can be greatly pronounced in seniors. Pre-existing conditions common in older adults such as depression and anxiety, osteoporosis, hypertension, and cognitive impairment can be made worse by drinking an excessive amount of alcohol, reports the New York Times. Seniors are also more likely to take prescription medications. The National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, otherwise known as DNIAAA, reports that drinking alcohol while on medications such as antihistamines, tranquilizers, sleeping pills, and even aspirin can be very dangerous and potentially fatal. They have gone all their life and, and lived this long and then possibly drugs and alcohol can bring them down because they're mixing it with their prescribed medications. Symptoms and indicators. The New York Times reports that some of the typical indicators of alcohol abuse such as missing work or being noticeably drunk are not always visible in seniors, particularly if they live alone. This can make identifying alcohol abuse in seniors more challenging. However, there are other signs and symptoms of alcohol problem. Behavioral indicators include lying about the amount of alcohol consumed, like a typical alcoholic anyway, drinking alone, appearing to be resentful or irritable when not drinking and gulping drinks where they take a glass of scotch and just gulp it down like it was a shot of soda. Exhibiting a combination of medical or physical symptoms such as slurred speech, malnutrition, unexplained nausea, and cirrhosis or other liver disorders could also indicate os uh, alcoholism in seniors. Folks, just picture being 80, 90 years old. You sit at home and you, what do you do? You look forward to prices Right or a general hospital and that's your whole life. So some of these older folks, they, they feel they don't have no one to turn to, nobody to speak to, and they turn to the bottle or to drugs. The moral of this also, besides the fact that this is an epidemic, is that if you are a child of an older parent or a grandchild of an older parent, try to give a casual phone call or a casual visit a few times a week. That's all you really need to do because if you show the elders that they are loved and still needed and wanted, they might cut down on some of these things. Because your visit and your phone call is sunshine and it's positive, which will give them positive results. But if we all, as younger people, avoid our seniors, their lives are very negative. Mind you, we all, God willing, will become seniors one day. We all will be in this predicament. So what you want your children, your grandchildren to treat you like is what you need to start treating your seniors like. Warning signs. The following are warning signs caregivers can watch to see if the older friend or family member might have substance abuse problems. Changes in sleep patterns and or appetite that cannot be attributed to other reasons. Increased falling, if they're constantly stubbing and falling. I mean, we know that seniors will do this automatically, but if it's more consistently uh, accelerating, then that's a sure sign. Frequently changing doctors or doctor shopping to get multiple prescriptions, that's a sure sign. And it's not just with seniors. I did a video on doctor shopping where a person, no matter what age, will go from doctor to doctor to try to get different prescriptions. Filling prescriptions on, at multiple different pharmacies. New onset irritability or agitation. Periods of confusion. Empty liquor bottles in the garbage or recycling bucket. Now you know if they're empty, they had to go somewhere. And I doubt the senior citizen put it in the sink. Doctors are specifically trained to listen to their patients and help them deal with other 
uh, with both their physical and emotional problems at their stage in their lives. If you think that uh, you or someone you know might have a problem with drugs or alcohol, talk to the doctor or someone you trust to get help, says Dr. Chantel. If you see that your loved one, your elder, whether it be your parents or grandparents, are going through some of these signs, do something about it. We talk about action plans. You need to have an action plan to have a goal to achieve that goal. What would our action plan be uh, here for these signs? It would be to talk to a doctor. What would be our action plan to avoid having the elder feel that they need to turn to the bottle? Casual phone calls and casual visits maybe a mail, even if you just stop there every once in a while and drop off a bagel and coffee in the morning. That will give the senior something to look forward to other than watching the Price is Right or Jenner Hospital daily. Health consequences. According to Dr. Chantel, overuse of prescribed medication or the act of combining medications with alcohol or other control something can lead to a number of serious consequences such as balance issues. Cognitive problems, delirium, depression, sleeping problems, increased odds in developing other medical disorders, adverse reactions that have potential and can be lethal. With so many uh, potential complications, it is virtually important, or vitally important, I should say, for older people to talk with their doctors about medications they are taking, both prescribed and over-the-counter because you can kill yourself with over-the-counter and to be forthcoming about the amounts they are ingesting not only pill-wise whether it's over-the-counter or medication but also they need to be honest about the alcohol and drug intakes the doctor has to be aware of everything and that's where we as the younger people need to pay attention we cannot merely just show up once a week and, and bring in the mail and just leave let's read the body language. Dr. Chantel also points out that it is important for a senior citizen to disclose their alcohol and drug control substance intake so that the doctor will be aware of any withdrawal symptoms. If the person becomes hospitalized and the attending doctor does not know his patient has a drug habit, he might prescribe medication to treat the patient for being restless or jittery without realizing the patient actually is going through withdrawal symptoms says Dr. Chantel. Warning signs need to be addressed again. Changes in sleep patterns or appetite loss. Are they telling you constantly they cannot sleep or they don't want to eat? That's a sure sign. Are they telling you that they're falling even with the walker and the crutch? That's a sure sign. Are they changing doctors constantly going from Dr. A to Dr. B to Dr. C hoping to get other prescriptions. Uh, do they want to go to CVS, Walgreens, and Rite Aid consistently and constantly, all three in the same week? Why not to the same pharmacy? Because they might be filling prescriptions from different doctors at different pharmacies. Because if they did it at the same pharmacy, the pharmacist would realize that this particular patient, Mrs. Jones, who's 85, has got three separate prescriptions for uh, painkillers. Is there a new onset of ir irritability or agitation going on with the uh, elder? Do you feel that there's kind of some periods of confusion where they might think that you're somebody else or they might uh, talk to you as if you were somebody else? Are you finding empty liquor bottles out in the garbage or in the recycling bucket? These are all signs to be very careful of. And here are the health consequences. Balance issue. That would cause the falling. Cognitive problems. Excuse me about that again. Delirium. Are they constantly talking about being depressed or are they showing signs of depression? Are they having sleeping problems? Increased odds of developing other medical disorders. Adverse reactions that are potential to be lethal. These are all signs. Folks, if you have the room at home and you can find it in your heart take this particular loved one this aged senior citizen into your home 
That way, not only will they get family to be around them, but they will also then feel wanted and you can monitor them. It's funny because I asked my mom this morning if she needed a ride tomorrow. We, ha we happen to be in a neighborhood. And she goes, I don't really need a ride anywhere. What I like to be is just around family. And that remark by itself, on full face value, tells me that she is alone and she's in need of companionship, of whether it being just a friend her own age or her own family. These are situations throughout every neighborhood, every city, every town, and every county. Let's unite as compassionate humans and help the elders, help your parents, help your grandparents. Because that is part of your book of life. Remind you, again, that every chapter, every year that you write should include how you helped your mother and your father or your grandparents. That book, that chapter should not say how you ignored them, how you abused drugs, abused alcohol, how you didn't raise your children properly. Make today, September 17th, 2014, your first book, or your first chapter in your new book. It is never too late, and I will tell you this right now, is that your higher power, my God, does not care, or I shouldn't say care, he will forgive no matter what you've done before today, as long as you reach out to him and say, I want to change my life. On June 22nd, 2013, that's exactly when I hit rock bottom, what I did. And every chapter so far in my book has been rewritten to be better. And folks, I will tell you, sobriety is not only fun, but it's beneficial for your health, for your mind, for your relationship, for your uh, uh, job or your employment. All around, sobriety makes you a full balanced person. And if that full balanced person becomes even more mature as a person if you are a good role model at home. Remind you that uh, when I said I was born in 61 up until chapter 17, which was my 17th year in life, I said that my parents, in conjunction with me, wrote my first 17 chapters. You, as the parent, as the mother and father, as the grandparent or the legal guardian, have to help your child by, rewrite, uh, by writing their book or their chapters in their book. And that should include proper role model. When a child looks at you, he looks at you as you're their hero. You are what they want to be. So when your child looks at you, and you're smoking, that's what your child wants to be, if that's what they're going to see. Or you're drinking, that's what your child's going to want to be. Or if they hear the profanity, that's what your child's going to want to do. And if they see you hitting your spouse or your grandparent or whatever, that's what they're going to do. That is nothing but bad role model. If you want your child to be exactly that, that's what you'll get out. But if you want, if you want your child to be, when they go to society at chapter 18 of their life, when they start writing their own chapters, as a person that loves other people, cares, has compassion, and has passion, then you need to be a role model. And a role model consists of four things that you need to not do. The first thing is not to smoke in front of them. Second is not to drink in front of them. Third is not to use profanity in front of them. And fourth is not to physically or verbally abuse anyone in your household. And that's not just in front of them. That's not just to do at all. And if you are doing that, you need to go to counseling and therapy. And if you're the victim watching this right now and you have been physically abused, you need to call the authorities. Because I say this and I'll say it again, a slap here or a punch there will eventually turn into a knife or a gun. It is easy to call the authorities and have your loved one taken out in handcuffs, which is only a temporary thing, 
hopefully they'll learn with some therapy, than to have the authorities being called to take you out in a body bag. Those four things cannot happen. Drinking, smoking, profanity, and abuse in your home. If you eliminate those four things, that's the first step of proper role model. Then these three things have to happen. Love, care, or I should say love and caring, and compassion. Those three things have to happen in your home. So if you eliminate those four and you add those three, you have now created an environment. The first 17 chapters in your child's book of life are going to be good chapters. And then at chapter 18, your child has to now go with that book. But remind you, if you gave your child those 17 chapters to be that way, when they hit society, they are groomed and, and molded to face society with a guard up. Because they are going to face society knowing that people can be loved, can be cared for. Not all people need to smoke, not all people need to drink, not all people need to, to use profanity, and people don't need to hit other people. But if you do these four things, if you smoke, you drink, you use profanity, and you abuse, if that's all you've done now for 17 years, your child is going to open the door and go to society and continue writing that those same chapters that they've had for the last 17 years, and they will blend right into society. Because that's exactly what society out there does for you mold and properly educate your children for the first 17 years to the best of your ability because they depend on your role model. You are their hero. So you need to start doing that folks. And if you are a drinker and you want to stop today, I'm going to discuss methods to stop. But the first thing you need to do is you have to stop denying that you have a problem. And it's not merely just saying, okay, Ralph, I quit. Because I've heard that many times, including myself. You need to not only say you're quitting, but you need to know that you have a problem. Your problem is not drinking. Your problem is not smoking. Your problem is that you're denying that you have an addiction issue. And when you admit that you have an addiction issue and that addiction issue gets faced with the methods we're going to discuss now, that is when you know your rock bottom has finally been uh, uh, accepted by you. But as long as you keep denying that you have a, an addiction problem, that's as long as you're going to keep having relapses every time you say, Ralph, I'm going to quit, and then two weeks later you're going to drink. So if today, September 17th, 2014, is your first day for the rest of your life, reach up to God. You ask your higher power for guidance and direction. And when you do that, these are the methods that you want to try for uh, recovery. The first thing, or the first method I always talk about is AA. AA has 12 steps. You go from step one all the way up to 12 eventually. You try to do your first 90 days with 90 meetings. They recommend you will show up an hour a day in a classroom setting or a church and you will exchange stories. I did try AA four to five times. It wasn't uh, sufficient enough for me. I'm sure it could have helped me, but I needed to have a larger, more active role. And that's when I, in 2013, created www.clearviews.info. I wanted to be more involved. When I do these videos, I don't just do them for you. These videos are created for us as a team. When we watch these videos, when I watch it with my wife and you watch it in my audience, we are constantly being reminded about our addiction, about our life, how to improve, and how to battle addiction. All 80-something videos that I have created have all one thing in common. They are all somehow related to addiction. They have one other thing in common. They all somehow talk about how to battle addiction. So AA is one way. My methods are another way. I have 16 alternative steps to their 12 steps. 
You can also, if you need to have a constant supervision of 24-7, check into a rehab center. They have the 30, 60, or 90-day programs. They do take insurance and Medicaid. However, if you don't have insurance, go on your state website, take a look to see if there's anything in your state that might offer you some uh, assistance on getting into a rehab. I know some states they do have it. I know New Hampshire in particular. Folks, if you're looking for a treatment center, if you go to www.clearviews.info, which is clearviews.info, go between page 6 and 8, you'll see an icon, and it states Rehab and Treatment Centers. Press on that. There are two columns of all 50 states. Press on the state that you live in, and you should be able to find a rehab center right there. If you don't for some reason then go to Google in the search bar type in rehab centers and put your town in there and you should be able to locate it that way. So you have those three methods and there are other methods but the one thing that we all have in common no matter what method you try is the fact that we're all shooting to live with sobriety. You will never live without an addiction. Whether you go into a treatment center, you're going to come out still addicted. Whether you go into AA, you're still addicted when you come out. When you go to my methods, you're still addicted when you come out. The difference is that these treatments, whether it's mine, AA, or treatment center, whatever, we are all teaching you is how to live with your addiction. Do you see where the difference is? We are all still addicted, but the difference is, is how to live with the addictions. How to live daily with your addiction of alcohol and a drug. That's the only difference. And all the methods need to have one common goal. And that is to reach to your higher power. Your God. Every day, thank the Lord Jesus that you are alive on this beautiful earth another day. Every day you need to ask for guidance and direction on how to live with your addiction. Folks, this is the example that I recently learned or heard, is that when you go to bed at night, your shoes or your slippers or your sneakers, instead of pushing them on the side of your bed, push them under your bed. Why is that, you might ask? Because when you wake up in the morning and you need to either put your shoes, your sneakers or your slippers back on, you have to drop to your knees to go under your bed and extend your arm to pull it out. And while you're on your knees, clasp your hands together and just thank your higher power for another day of life on this beautiful earth. Thank your higher power for the family you have and the roof that you have to live under and the food provided on your table. It's a simple thing to do while you're on your knees getting your sneakers, your shoes, or your slippers from under the bed. Just thank Jesus Christ that you are still here to be able to enjoy life. Part of those chapters in your book, and I want to bring this up again because it's important, is to include a chapter on generosity. And every chapter should have that in your book of life, whether it's being 60 chapters for 60 years of age, or 100, or only 15 so far. Every chapter should include generosity. If you have $10 and somebody needs $2, you still have eight by giving two. And the analogy that I want to utilize is that there is never, ever, a U-Haul truck behind a hearse. When you came into this earth, you came with nothing. And when you leave this earth, you leave with nothing. And the reason I say U-Haul truck, because a U-Haul truck moves your personal possessions, but it cannot follow you to your grave. Your personal possessions will stay behind. So why not do what God expects you to do, and that is to share your wealth with your friends and your family. Be compassionate towards other people. Be Have a passion for life itself. And be generous. Those are 
the written documentations that should be in your chapters on your book of life. It's that simple. You need to add those chapters. You need to add those little things like, I thank God daily. I shared with my family. I didn't smoke in front of my children. I didn't drink in front of my children. I didn't use profanity and I damn well didn't hit a person. Those are the documentations that sh should be written in your, in your chapters of the Book of Life. We discussed the different methods. We discussed you, the Book of Life. We discussed the chapters and we discussed the four things that should not be at home. Smoking, drinking, profanity, and abuse. And we discussed three things that have to be in a home. Compassion, caring, and uh, love. Those three have to be there. Folks, when you come home daily, welcome your family open arms. Appreciate the fact that you have a family. And one way to start appreciating that is by having family nights. Have game nights. Have family outings. Have family dinners. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, try to have a family dinner every night. A family dinner is good bonding and it's good communication. It becomes a forum where you might find out what your children are going through in life. You should be able to teach your children that they can come to you for no matter what is either good or bad in their life. Remember, they are your creation and God created you created your children and entrusted you with children. So it's up to you to continue molding your children properly. One thing we don't want any one of us is to have our children on Jerry Springer, Murray, or Steve Volkos talking about it. They are doing what they're doing because they're upbringing. If your child for some reason ends up on there and you know you've done everything positive to help this child, throughout from zero all the way to chapter 17 or 18 then that is not even an issue for you to be concerned about but if your child does end up on there and says that and you know that you were smoking drinking hitting or using profanity then you are to blame simple as that so folks we have to start taking care of our senior citizens and I'm going to address that real quick again. Substance abuse in senior citizens has become highly increasingly dangerous. Whether you're a 20 or 80 year old, substance and drug abuse will come and get you. Whether you're black or white, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're successful or homeless, addiction will eat you up if you allow it and if you have an addiction you will always have an addiction but why don't you today September 17 2014 start learning how to live with it how to have different methods to live with it and I guarantee you sobriety is nothing but pure joy special considerations for seniors the effects of alcohol can be greatly pronounced in seniors Pre-existing conditions common in older uh, adults such as depression and anxiety, hypertension, uh, cognitive impairment can be made worse by drinking an excessive amount of alcohol. What the seniors might be doing is mixing their prescribed medication with over-the-counter medication with possibly drugs and alcohol. That is sure recipe for disaster. I'm going to go right to the warning signs. Warning signs include changes in sleep patterns or appetite cannot be... Uh, attributed to other reasons. Why are they not eating properly and why are they not sleeping properly? Increased falling, constantly falling with or without a walker, uh, constantly changing doctors. They want to go from one doctor to the next doctor and why do they want to do that? Possibly to get the same prescription from different doctors so they can go to different pharmacies and fill those prescriptions to feed their addiction. Just because they're senior citizens, does that mean they might not have addiction? They might be agitated a lot. They might be confused a lot. Health consequences could be balance issues. That's why they're falling. Cognitive problems. Delirium. 
depression, sleeping problems, adverse reactions that are potential and lethal, increased odds of developing other medical disorders. Folks, if you have an elder, if you don't have time or geographically they're too far away, make those polite courtesy phone calls. Send them a basket of fruit. But do something to be part of their life. Remember I told you about the little remark from my mother. I asked my mother, we're going to be in your neighborhood. Can we pick you up and take you somewhere? And she says, it's not that I need a ride. It's that I want to be around family. That is a remark that's being probably made by every senior citizen. And my mother's still capable of walking. Can you imagine a senior citizen that cannot even move or mobilize around, that literally just sits there all day and watches General Hospital and uh, Price is Right, and that's the highlight of their day. So add a couple highlights. Add a highlight like phone calls, showing up, bringing him breakfast, sending him a gift. Because no matter which way you look at it, God willing, we are all going to be senior citizens one day. And how you treat your senior is how you're going to be treated because I truly believe in karma. If you treat people good, you'll be treated good. Same token goes on the other side. If you treat them bad, that's how you're going to be treated. It's that simple, folks. And if you have the room at home and the senior doesn't mind, have that senior move in with you for a lot of reasons. A, you can monitor that senior. B, that senior will then have a reason to wake up every morning and maybe, just maybe not a reason to drink and use medication unnecessarily because they are around family. Seniors become like children. They need attention. I grant you this, a lot of seniors become nasty but they don't realize how nasty they sound and if you have a strong enough mind try to avoid any type of argument because you are it's not good for the senior and it's certainly not good for you to argue they say things that they don't mean the best thing to do is to try to appease them to the best of your ability without any type of argument it is so high alarming statistically speaking of the abuse of substance whether it's alcohol or drugs that seniors are doing we as middle-aged people and young people need to come together as a community because my websites they stand for they, they start off with clear community lessons and power addiction recovery well I'm going to add this I'm gonna say community lessons empower adult recovery adult for seniors let's just say we'll change the R from I mean the A from addiction to adult we all need to come together as a community we need to help our seniors and uh, I'm speaking about your parents I'm speaking about your grandparents but even if you have a neighbor that's old pick up the newspaper and bring it to their door or drop by with a basket of fruit I'm sorry, that's one of my chats again. Apologize. But that's what it really comes down to, folks. So we addressed a lot of issues today, and it was a very good subject, and I hope you took it to heart, and I hope to God that you utilize my lessons on your chapters of your book of life start rewriting your future chapters no matter what your chapters were before today because God is willing to not worry about it it is today all the way to the end that counts most start rewriting those starting today it's that simple folks I hope that you truly enjoyed my my uh, show today and we will also be talking about uh, other uh, uh, aspects of when it comes to seniors um, I have one show coming up uh, what to do um, if you were arrested for DWI and you were either put in jail or a rehab center what to do after coming out what are the things that you need to look out for and watch out for if you had to go to jail or if you had to go to rehab center and you come out to society again I will discuss what we need to do 
to either help you blend back into society or you as the uh, person coming out of either jail or rehab how to blend back into society on your own. We'll discuss that. Folks, I always say this, but you need to let the sun shine in your home and in your heart because sunshine will give you nothing but positive results. Eliminate the negative, the darkness, because darkness only gives you negative results. Remember, a sober today will make such a better tomorrow like you wouldn't believe, but you need to have a sober and a sober, sober day. There is no such thing as I'll drink in the morning and then sober up this afternoon and I had a semi-sober day. You need to have a sober 24-hour day to have a better tomorrow. And if you believe what I'm telling you in here, it will become clear no matter where you are. No matter where you are. And if you, tonight, when you put your slippers or your sneakers or your shoes under the bed while climbing into bed, push it a little further under. So tomorrow morning, when you wake up, when you drop to your knees to go and get those shoes, sneakers, or slippers, you thank your Lord Jesus Christ that he gave you the privilege of being on this beautiful earth another day. That he is allowing you to have a roof over your head and have food in your stomach and get a loving family to be around. Because it is God that allows you to live each and every day. So you need to thank him. So when you're getting those slippers, sneakers, and shoes, just drop to your knees and thank him daily. And try to share whatever you have. Remember the story, there is never a U-Haul behind a hearse because what you came to this earth with is exactly what you're going to leave with, which is nothing. So if you have extra, share it. Give to your churches if you want to, if you don't have family to give to, or you don't want to give to family, but just share it. And folks, start writing your chapters in your book of life with nothing but positive sunshine starting today. Eliminate the drinking, the drugging, the profanity, the smoking, and the abuse. Add love, caring, and compassion to your life. Folks, again, have a sober day. And um, I can't wait for our next show, which will be tomorrow. And I, oh, and then we have Throwback Thursday, which I haven't decided what we're going to do yet. But I kind of have a feeling what I'm going to concentrate on is uh, this particular segment, maybe two days in a row, because this one hit home a senior citizen, because I'm getting close to my, my own age. Uh, but I do still have, thankfully from God, uh, two, uh, a mother and a father still alive that are in their 70s. So I might replay this on Throwback Thursday. But if you have any requests, uh, let me know. Clear reform at yahoo.com or you can call me at 844-405-HELP. Have a sober day and I guarantee you have a better tomorrow and God bless you. But more importantly, have a sober, sober rest of the week. God bless you. Bye-bye.